So we have now a model that uh, can evaluate again uh, the evolution of which we have to enter manually, right? We have to enter here with 0, 1, 0 to indicate whether it's a tail or a head. And uh, the, based on this, what we enter here, the other columns will calculate actually for how long we're really playing. So in fact, these results, when this value becomes zero, these results should be ignored, right? They are generated, but they wouldn't be really uh, coin flips in this game if it ends after five rounds, right? And then the important thing is that the number of flips in my top model, high-level model, is actually linked to a summation function which sums the values here in the last column. And by this, right, because we expect here to have a sequence of values one, and then from a certain point, there will be value zero to the end of the table. Therefore, if you sum all those values, you will get the number of coin flips that uh, we had in one game. So now what I need to do is I need to shift to the at risk uh, toolbar and I need to generate uh, or enter distributions for random parameters. And the random parameters will be values in this column, head or tail. So I'm going to click on distribution and that will open a, 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 a window that has all possible distributions in uh, at risk. There's actually quite a lot of possible distributions, most of which I don't even know exactly uh, where they come from. But we will use one of the discrete distributions because we want to generate 0 or 1. This is a discrete uh, random number. And I will just click on the distribution that is called the discrete which allows us to enter any uh, random uh, discrete distribution with given probabilities. So if you click on it, it gives you some default values. The values that will be generated are 0, 1, and 2, with probability 0 0.3, 0 0.4, and 0 0.3, respectively, or 30, 40, and 30%. And right, and you have here a, a chart that shows you the probabilities of each of the values 0, 1, and 2. Now, of course, I need heads or tails with 50-50 chance. So I will edit this. I will put a distribution 0 or 1, and I will change the probabilities to 0 0.5 and 0 0.5. And notice if I did edit them, I get an updated chart that shows me this is the unbiased coin, 50% chance for 0, which indicates tail, and 50% chance for 1, which indicates uh, a head. Right. So now I can click OK. And you will see that actually there is a function now in this place. Instead of this, there's a function. I'm going to actually delete this risk static, right? It's an optional parameter. Um, this is a function that, uh, that uh, I could have entered manually. But of course, if you use the toolbar, it will help you enter it if you don't know this function uh, by filling out details in a dialog box. So now what I really want is I want to copy this function all the way down Right, because I want those coin flips to be generated further down. Now, uh, the, by default, at risk displays an average or expected value of the random variable. Now, right, if I have values 1 or 0 with probability 50-50%, then the average or expected value is 0 0.5. But the interesting thing is you can, for example, go to settings and you can say, um, you can say, that you want to display random values, not static values like expected values. And if you click OK now, you will see one possible evolution of the game. And now this is at, right, generated using the risk discrete random distribution, and it is actually a random game. So you see this random game actually took seven flips, and now we won only one dollar after seven flips. Right? And the interesting thing is that I can now refresh in Excel. If you want to refresh, you press F9, and then you obtain another result of the game. So in this case, example, we, we have three tails at the beginning, and so again, we win $5, and we can refresh again and obtain another result. In this case, we had nine coin flips, uh, head, tail, head, tail, head, tail, and then three tails, and then the game ends after nine coin flips. And so in this case, we lose $1. So we have now a model that can generate any possible evolution of the game, up to 200-something 
uh, flips of coins maximum. Uh, but the problem is now we don't want to generate them manually. We would like uh, some kind of uh, facility that will run this game many times, collect the final payoff from each game, and tell us what is there, what are all the possibilities, somehow represent a large number of possibilities, and this is what we call a simulation. Now, in this case, we have just one scenario. It's this game that we're playing, so number of scenarios is one, right? We will simulate it once, and we will enter here a number of iterations to, to simulate this. So, in the next clip, we will consider uh, simulations and the results of simulations.